The work I'm presenting today is on CBT Investor Yuan Hans Benefit in collaboration with Chun Wan and my advisor Sinto. Maybe many of you have seen this abusing photo of this favorite man, but not many of you know who was behind the camera of this photo. <laughs> 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 okay, those are the analysis. And without further ado, let me first tell you about our motivations. I found our motivations allow contemplative expansion in terms of the broadness. <laughs> At, at the most broad level, uh, we try to classify and characterize quantum physics of matter, which in my view is not only a central goal of condensed matter physics, but a central goal of physics in general. And then more concretely, we would like to understand the interplay between symmetry and the entanglement between many body systems. In recent years, tremendous progress has been made in understanding such interplay for two-dimensional systems. But uh, in three-dimensional systems, um, Things are still largely elusive. And our work is one of the first systematic studies of 3D symmetry in which gap is known as entangled phases. Furthermore, uh, you will see there are many interesting applications using the ideas developed here. Uh, you know, when you do a contemplative expansion, you may go to the high order, but in the presentation, you check it. Let me also check it here and go into the talk. Now, this is my outline. I will first introduce you the concept of a uh, quantum spin equation. Then I will discuss uh, briefly about the classification of symmetry in which you work on the uh, More details can be found in the papers. Um, and I will, later I will talk about two applications of the ideas developed here, uh, applications to 3D topological crystalline insulators. I will talk about three examples. One of them is what I call double topological insulator. The other are uh, topological crystalline insulators with symmetry in both gap surfaces. That is, as long as the symmetries are preserved, then the surface state has to be gapless. Uh, in particular, a symmetric surface topless borders is allowed. Uh, okay, uh, introduction. So traditionally, quantum phases are distinguished by their symmetry breaking patterns. For example, in the left, the system breaks spin rotational symmetry at the recorder and the magnet. And in the right, the system breaks a lattice rotational symmetry and the recorder a balance point solid. So a natural question is, are there non-trivial phases beyond symmetry breaking? But now the answer is very well known. Uh, the answer is yes, and the most prominent examples are rational quantum phosphates. Uh, but today I'm talking about another class of examples uh, that are quantum spin liquids. Well, uh, in the morning we will already have one talk about it. But I'm talking about a particular type of quantum spin liquid, 3D U1 quantum spin liquid. This is a spin system described by a 3D compact human pitch theory at known edges. The excitations of uh, this emergent human pitch theory include gapless photon, electric charge, magnetic monopole, and diamonds, which are bound states of for certain charges and monopoles. Now, in this talk, I will assume only photons gapless and all other excitations are gapped. Um, this state is not associated with any symmetry breaking, so what's non-trivial about it? Uh, it's uh, non-trivial because of fractionalization in the system. More precisely, the expectations, electric charge, magnetic monopole, and the diamonds can have fermionic statistics, although they emerge from a purely spin system. What's more interesting may be that these expectations can also have mutual breaking. For example, if I fix the position of my elementary charge here, and then move my monopole around it, then the manifold wave function will accumulate a hydrolytic form phase given by that formula, where omega is the solid angle spanned by the trajectory. Okay, this is a very quick introduction to the concept of you want to spin liquid. The take home message is uh, it's, not a, it's not trivial, but not associated with symmetry breaking, it's associated with fractionalization. Now, let me discuss the classification of uh, symmetry in which you want to spin liquid. This is really a question about the interplay between fractionalization and the symmetry. So, but now it's very well known that fractional excitations can carry fractional quantum numbers. So we can ask uh, how can global symmetries be incorporated into the one quantum spin liquid? And there's an analogous question in fractional quantum pulse states. You know, if we have a fractional quantum pulse state and uh, you can have a new one charge conservation symmetry, then we can ask what kind of fractional charges can the fractional excitations carry? This question is important because of the of the following concept: symmetry protect the distinctions between uh, phases of matter. Uh, suppose we have two states, state 1 state 2. We want to go from state 1 to state 2 by turning the Hamiltonian, turning some parameters of the Hamiltonian. 
uh, it can happen that if we restrict our Hamiltonian to satisfy some symmetry, then to go from state one to state two, I have to go across a phase transition. However, if I allow the Hamiltonian to break the symmetry, then I can get a longer phase transition. Then we, if this is the case, we say these two states have symmetry protective distinctions. Namely, they are identical in the absence of symmetry and distinct in the presence of symmetry. So uh, now I can introduce you the concept of symmetry in rich U1 quantum spin liquids. They are U1 quantum spin liquids uh, with a global symmetry and they have symmetry protective distinctions among each other. Then the task to classify them uh, is given a global symmetry, what are all the possible U1 quantum spin liquids enriched by the symmetry? Uh, because of the time limit, the result can be found in the <laughs> Let me talk about some interesting applications. Uh, so there are many applications, but I will only talk about um, one particular direction, that is to use the ideas here to help identify topological materials. This is our strategy. We start from a, a gap free from a Hamiltonian and examine its surface state. If the surface is gapless, then we ask if this gapless surface is protected by any symmetry. If it is, we know this Fermion system is a non-trivial topological state for Fermions. But at this moment, we do not know if it's also a non-trivial topological state for interacting Fermions. Then to check whether it's non-trivial for under interaction, one way to do is to check the properties of the molecules of this insulator using the ideas developed by in the U1 from the screen. Um, then if the molecules have some non-trivial projectile quantum number, you know such a state is also non-trivial for interacting fermions. Let me emphasize this is a non-contemplative non characterization of the topological state, and it's usually very simple. In some sense, it's even simpler than the band structure characterization. So here's one example, which I call double topological insulator. When we understand the topological insulator, the surface can have one to a cone protected by U1 charge conservation and time reversal. But if you have two dark cones, uh, the insulator can be smoothly connected to a trivial insulator. Then you can ask, how can we make such a state with two dark cones also non-trivial? One way to do it is to add a middle symmetry. Uh, in the paper, you can find an example where the middle symmetry is designed such that uh, the the two dark cones are still protected. So this is a non-trivial topological state for free fermions. Because it has two dark cones, I call it a double topological state. I would also like to understand what is non-trivial for interacting fermions. Uh, the answer is yes, because you can check the properties of the monopoles, and you will see it carries, uh, the monopoles carry non-trivial projective quantum numbers. OK, my final example. Uh, in the same paper, you can also find two examples of topological crystalline insulators whose surfaces have this symmetry enforced gaplessness. Uh, namely, the symmetries of the system involve SU2 and middle symmetries. And uh, the representative surface states uh, are, have two dual cones on the surface. And you can show that the local theorem, the surface states must be gapless if the symmetries are to be preserved. In particular, a uh, symmetric gap surface topological order is forbidden. This is unlike the usual 3D symmetry protected topological space, where a gap surface topological order is usually allowed. So, so this is analogous to the four properties of the hidden 3D, which I assume to symmetry. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not familiar with that, because, but I think so. Oh, that's, okay. Just, just, yeah, just, well, okay, just replace the mirror by time inverse of actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yes, yes. Okay, then this is my summary. Uh, I briefly, very briefly, briefly talked about the classification and the characterization of symmetry which on the screen because I, I talked about some applications for topological materials. There are some implications and there are some open questions. Thank you. Good is uh, Nick.